Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Put back your wand and bye now. I was expecting to get a feather like this, or plume, and I end up getting a feather drab. That's quite disappointing. I am not a milliner. I've read a lot about manipulating feathers and how to do it, and I've seen it done. I haven't done a whole lot myself aside from some steaming and some, you know, uh, curling. So the challenge is to take the knowledge I have up here and put it to work and see if I can turn these disappointing feathers into something I will be proud to wear. So I hope this works out, because if it doesn't, I've basically wasted 20 bucks, plus all the time it's gonna take for me to put into these feathers. So first of all, I'm just gonna go to Pinterest and start look, poking around my Pinterest boards and see what I can find. So let's see. Mm -hmm. This could be interesting. I don't like it though. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. This one. I don't think I have enough. I don't think I have enough feathers to do that. Yeah, no, because look, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I don't think I have enough to do that. Uh, that I could do. We could do this. Let's save this. So that's kind of the thing. I'm looking for something that will work with any of the hats that I do have that I like and that will at least be somewhat of a challenge. Oh yes, I've always loved this guy. Um, I actually have him in one of my books. I've loved him forever. But what's interesting about this is it's cool seeing a launch connect with a, oh, with a spangled feather. And I think, I totally think we could do this. So yeah, let's add this. We'll just go ahead and the side and see what we can do with him. What about these dudes? Hmm. Meh. Ah. Aha, this guy, this, come on, come up, look at him. He's got a dock and beret. I have a dock and beret. He's got one, two, three, four, five. I, okay, I think, I think I can pull that one off. All right, okay, I think I can do this guy here. Um, now, his are black, but we'll do them in white. And I think, You know, I have some. No, we're using these feathers. So we'll do white instead of black. These will work great for that, I think. We can definitely make that happen. And then we can take a couple, I think we'll, we'll choose, we'll choose the best ones out of the bunch to see if we could do the lens connect that's in the blue and white. I think, I think we could make that work. So yeah, so we have a plan. Okay, so I guess next we're going to figure out how to do this. Let's start with our first look. So I have 10 of these feathers that I got from Amazon. They're gonna need a little more fullness, so I think I want to double them. But looking at the hat we're making, there's a total of five or 10 fluff. They're too long for what we're gonna do anyway, so I, what I think I'm gonna try, and I think this will work, is I'm going to cut them in half, and then I'm gonna stitch them together and then curl them and shape them into 10 separate shorter plumes, but also fuller. So let me get my my uh, not fabric scissors here. Let's start the first step. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and layer this on top of this one. I want the top to kind of sit there and then I'm gonna use some hair clips to hold the two together, sort of like my third hand. Um, this is my least favorite thing to do in the world. I hate sewing feathers together. It's just painful. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I don't know. Have you ever sewn feathers together? Do you like it as much as I do? Starting is the hardest part. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
Meh. I have to do it again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, this is so fast. Right? Oh, come on. Really? Dios mio. And I didn't even catch it. Gemini Christmas. Oh my gosh, I missed it again. Everything just gets in the way. Oh, jeez. Every time. <laughs> right, so why not just glue them? Because in my experience, there will be times like maybe part of the feather gets messed up or something happens and you want to take the feathers apart you're not going to be able to if they're glued. You know, you're going to have glue residue. It's one thing that it's really frustrating when you go to take a hat apart or something and somebody has glued everything onto it. That's the worst. So I will suffer through this. Yeah, <laughs> that was frustrating. Oh, so frustrating. All right. So here is our shorter, fluffier one. It's still a little scraggly though, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it. Then I'm also going to peel off down here. Now I just need to do this 10 more times. I'm very excited because my neighbors are being quiet right now, so I can actually film with my door open. Although, now I hear street noises, but whatever. So our first set of feathers are all sewn together and trimmed. I want to continue in that vein. So I'm going to move on and do the next feather style, which is the single feather and the, the guy that's in the blue and the white outfit. Doing some research last night and I came across an old live journal blog I used to follow. It's La Bricolus. La Bricolus? Bricolus? I don't know how to say that. So I should look that up. Hey Google. Bricolus? Nope, not Bricolus. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Rick Ellis is a writer and former <laughs> stage actor. No. Uh, oh, Google. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, Bricolus. 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 <laughs> a live journal, La Bricolus. And she's actually got a YouTube channel now. On there, I came across the most amazing hack I've seen in a long time for sewing feathers together. It requires some foam core and some binder clips. So let's make our lives easier and make one. Before we load this thing up, let's, let's take a look at what we got here. So I have, these are the three nicer feathers that I have, but also I, fa I have some other feathers that are like different size. So what I can do is cut these apart and actually sew them together with this in, in sections. But a lot of the vintage feathers that you see that are these big luscious feathers, there are a lot of feathers sewn together. So we're going to try to do that with this pile of feathers and hopefully we'll be successful. We'll see. I think out of my three best feathers, I don't like the tip on this one, so that won't be my, I think, to be my main feather. It's the largest one. It's got the best shape. So this is the one that's going to be pretty much sitting on the top. So what I'll start doing is building up the back of it. So what I want to do is I have this one with a weird tip. So I'm going to combine these two together to get it, give it a better tip. Because I have these kind of spaced out in the stem area, probably will trim off the quill part on these. All right. Let's, let's, let's try out our new toy.
think I cut the hole too big for this feather. <laughs> Yeah, I cut the hole too big. So I'm gonna use the rest of the foam core that I have. I'm just gonna make a new one. So I'm gonna cut a smaller one for this smaller feather size. So I'll do that and I'll be back. Okay, let's give this one a shot. Did it work? <laughs> um, yes, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I do think that even on the second one, I did cut the hole a little bit too big. I probably would want, cause I did a two inch hole. I think that I probably would have been better off at like one and a half, maybe even one inch. So, but huge difference, even with, even with that, like just huge difference. I'm gonna layer this one in here as well. And then I will sew the last one the very top and then after that we'll trim it and move on to the next step. And here it is. One perfectly sewn together feather. If you're sewing feathers together, make yourself this. I mean, it cost me. I had the binder clips and it was a dollar for the board at the dollar store. So 100% worth it. Like it really did make a difference. So next up, I'm going to trim the feathers down, but I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow because it's dinner time. <laughs> so we'll continue tomorrow. So I'm back and we left off, we had finished sewing it together. So the next step is I wanna trim it and I'm looking at it and you know, it's kind of pretty good shape. It just, it needs a little bit of a trim. Some of the veins are a little bit longer and everything. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of trim it down so that they're all of about the same length. <laughs> yeah, I just made a big mess. That was kind of fun still. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is I'm going to deal with these guys here. Nope, there's the neighbors. I was wondering when I'd hear from them. Just wait a minute. Right, let's shut the door. Okay, get a little grip on it and you just tear them off. This isn't too thick, but typically what I like to do is kind of shave this down a bit so that we don't have as much bulkiness. Cause a lot of times if you're, when you're sewing feathers together, the, the stems can get pretty thick. This is a relatively thin stem, but I'm gonna show you what I do anyways. I'm really just shaving this down a bit. I don't want to shave too much because it's already fairly thin um on that one but you know i do want to shave a little bit off of both sides of, of uh, this one where they come together <laughs> this is really hard to do in front of the camera but you can see i've gotten this pretty flat and so it just it'll just now it should cup underneath the top one the thread here at the top my thread and I'm going to put it through the loop down here. I'm going to come back up to the beginning. I'm going to pull my thread at the top and then I'm just going to tug at it until I tuck that loop back under. Trim it down. Once I've pulled it a little bit, I'm going to trim it down. I'm going to continue to pull until I've pulled it back in and then I can just snip at the top and we are good. So I have, these are brass spangles. 
I'm going to sew them on. And in the artwork, he's got them on both sides of the feather because the feather sits like this, like that. And he's got them coming up this spine. And then again, we see them over here. So I haven't tried this yet. So it's going to be another first for us. Let's see how this works. <laughs> it's going to be hard because it's all curly and stuff like that. But I thought that it'd be best to curl it first. I don't know. I could be wrong before sewing them on. Okay. So first I'm going to secure my thread. Okay. Thread is secured. And I'm just going to pop a spangle on right through the hole. And then come back to the other side. Yeah. And then I'm going to do another spangle. And then I'm going to come back around and then I'm going to go back through the hole of the previous spangle. I think, I think that's going to be the best way to do this. Okay, yeah, I should have done this when I was stitching the layers together. I think that would have made it easier. And these are brass, so they're not super shiny. Um, and they, they do have a natural tarnish to them. Where'd it go? There it is, huh? I think one thing I would change about this is that, I don't know, I feel like the threads are very visible because I used, I did use linen. The next time I do this, if I'm doing it, I probably would actually use either silk or because the spine is a little darker colored, I might even use something that matches the spangle instead. The other thing is the curling iron didn't work great. Um, it kind of just floofed it. The curls didn't stay. You know, it still has a little bit of a, a curl to it, but the curls didn't really stay. I don't know if it's because the barrel was too fat or whatnot, so I might try another one. I don't know, have you ever tried this before? Do you use a curling iron to curl your feathers? Why is it not working for me? <laughs> thing I'm gonna do is I actually, I want to put a little aglet on the end of this. Uh, so I'm, this is, Actually, so like the spangles, this aglet, and even the linen thread, we actually have started to carry. This is stuff we use so much that we started to carry it in our Etsy shop. So I'll put a link below for all of these things that uh, we sell. And anything that I, I actually, I'll try to put a link below for everything I use. Some of it is from our Etsy shop. Some of it is from elsewhere. And so it fits nicely on there. And what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just end up gluing this on. You know, there's actually a website. If you don't know about this website, it's called this to that. And so you can go on there and look it up and see what the best glue is for whatever purpose, your, whatever you're gluing together. So that, that's a great resource. So I'll, I'll make sure to put that in the description too. Mm -hmm. 